Hello, welcome to the Monday, April 11th, 2022 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, let's start with a couple of Spring 4 Shell related items that sort of came out uh, last week, but didn't make it in any of last week's uh, podcasts. So, really, just a little bit. Uh, follow up here first of all cisco keeps updating its advisory they labeled this vulnerability as critical and uh, there is now a long list of uh, cisco products that are affected uh, for which uh, also at least in some cases updates are available so if you are a cisco customer uh, double check this advisory i'll link to it uh, in the show notes had actually a little bit of a hard time myself finding the correct advisory here that lists all the vulnerable uh, products. And I do believe this is still very much work in progress, so keep checking it for any updates, any new products included here. And Trend Micro is reporting that uh, they're seeing some exploitation of the vulnerability in order uh, to install the Mirai botnet. No real surprise here. Mirai botnet and crypto coin miners is certainly very much expected. We have seen a number of attempts like that. Now, uh, the Trend Micro logs that they're showing really just uh, show that someone is exploiting the uh, web shell that's being left behind by the proof of concept exploit. It even still uses the default password. So this may not so much be an exploitation of actually the uh, Spring for Shell vulnerability, but instead it's really more parasitic where they're looking for web shells that are already installed in particular, since they're using the default password instead of uh, coming up with their own password, this would be a trivial change to the original uh, exploit. And then more speculative, uh, but uh, possibly related to Spring for Shell is an announcement by a Twitter user who goes under Brazen Eagle, who claims that there is a zero day vulnerability in Nginx that has not uh, been uh, patched yet. Now, Brazen Eagle has since uh, marked their Twitter account as a private. So the original tweet is no longer visible, but there is a GitHub repository that goes with uh, this uh, particular announcement. And that's still avail- available. There's also another uh, Twitter user by the name of Gitworm, who also posted some details based on the original Brazen Eagle post. One critical component here appears to be the LDAP uh, daemon. So if you're not using LDAP for authentication, you're probably good here. The root cause appears to be an LDAP injection. Now, they're justifying the limited details with not having really had any luck getting in contact with Nginx. They're apparently also trying to get into contact with some products based on Nginx that apparently are vulnerable. So this is one of those things you probably want to keep an eye on it and watch out for any Nginx uh, updates. And then again, remember, it's likely related uh, to the LDAP of Daemon. So if you're not using this, much less of an issue for you. But who knows, maybe we'll all get a break and it just turns out to be some Twitter drama. And then we got an update on the new Russian certificate authority that was set up in response to some uh, non-Russian certificate authorities no longer renewing certificates for Russian entities. This new certificate authority now has started actually issuing certificates and uh, Kohn Ruhorst uh, did take a look at the certificates and how they were issued. It appears to be fairly sort of quickly put together, like it uses, for example, sequential serial numbers, which is not recommended, no real good entropy and such. Also, of course, no certificate transparency. Interestingly, in order to get a certificate, you actually have to apply for it with the Russian Ministry of Digital Development. It takes a couple days then to be approved. There is also a GitHub available with 
with all the domains that currently received a certificate. And as I'm recording, this uh, looks like there are 2,355 domains. And of course, uh, pretty much all of them dot ru domains i see a couple dot com ones for uh, some russian banks for example that uh, have uh, been issued these certificates doesn't of course mean that these are the only certificates that they are using so far the yandex browser is the only browser really supporting it it's based on uh, chromium and the blog post also talks a little bit about how it sort of loads the respective uh, configuration and Bleeping Computer is reporting how the leak of uh, the uh, Conti uh, documents, that's the ransomware gang and uh all of its documents, including source code, was recently leaked, which then led to copycats now uh, creating ransomware that's basically based on this source code, and interestingly, targeting a number of Russian organizations with it. Given the common uh, source code base, it uh, should pretty well be recognized by existing signatures for Conti ransomware. But then, of course, we have seen them even fail for the original. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.